want to do more videos on the Kabbalah, the mysteries, definition of what God is. When you read in their books <clears throat> from mystical secret societies, Gnostic, Kabbalah, whatever, they do use the word God. And sometimes they get, I think they get lower level kind of dupes to the idea that when they're talking about God, it's the same as the Christian, the Muslim, or, you know, whoever believes in a personal God that is going to hold people personally accountable. I just wanted to show that um, I found a couple videos and a couple articles showing that they don't really believe in God as we understand it and why that is very important to understand when they're talking about God. Anyways, here. The Kabbalah doesn't believe in God, right? Not the way most people think God is. Wait, say that again? The Kabbalah does not... It doesn't believe in God. The word G-O-D suggests for people a personality, some guy in the sky somewhere over there looking down at us. Right. And that's not what the Kabbalah describes as God, and that's not even what the Torah describes as God. The truth is that if you open up the Torah, you won't see the word God, because the Torah is written in Hebrew, and, and the word that is being translated as God is a Yud, the He, the Vav, the He. Right. So the question is, what does that word really mean? Okay. Was, is, and will be. Right. But it also means Havaya, which means existence. In other words, that word is pointing to ultimate timeless existence, the source of all being. So, you know, I don't want to play this full video. You can go ahead and watch it. Um, very interesting. Uh, and then there's this uh, other one here. I'm your host, Yehaskel Lang, and we're back again with uh, best-selling author and educator, Rabbi David Aaron of Israelite. Welcome, Rabbi Aaron. How are you doing? Okay, how are you? Great. Good, good to have you here. Now, I've been pretty nice to you uh, until now, Rabbi, but I'm going to start asking you some pretty tough questions. Oh, no, please don't. <laughs> Sorry, too late. <laughs> okay. We've been talking a little bit about God and the meaning of God in our lives, uh, but the fact is, um, atheism is pretty popular today. There was uh, recently a conference in Tel Aviv on atheism. Hundreds of people showed up. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, um, uh, m many of my audiences are pretty shocked when they hear me say that I actually also don't believe in God. A and, rabbi doesn't uh, believe in God? Well, yeah, not only I don't believe in God, but uh, the truth is Moses didn't believe in God, never heard of God, never heard from God. Uh, because if you look in the Torah, you won't find the word God. Now, um, I'm not just playing semantics. The word God conjures up all kinds of crazy and somewhat childish images of some guy in the sky who's got some control issues, who's basically made everything fun, forbidden. There's a cute comic strip by the name of Calvin and Hobbes, the the toy tiger and... and I know it work. very well. I read it every morning. Yes. Oh, yeah? Okay, good. And uh, so Hobbes, the toy tiger, turns to Calvin and he says, Calvin, you believe in God. Calvin's got this philosophical look on his face. He's got his, his hands behind his head. And he goes, well, somebody's out to get me. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people I meet, <clears throat> that's, that's God. God is some very punishing, uh, zealous being who who is hungry for honor and control well, that's why, what, why, why why it's a negative concept of god why do we ha naturally have that or is it so you get it so far you know he said in the last video and he tells people he does not believe in god so you know let me get to uh i think that right around here i'll just play i think it's right around here triggered by that word god I prefer not to use the word God as much as possible because the real word in the Torah is the Yud, the He, the Vav, the He. When we see that word, we say Adonai, which is a completely different name. But let's just take a moment to understand what does the name Yud, the He, the Vav, the He mean, which we don't pronounce, which someday we will, but right now we don't. 
That's what? interesting. He said someday they will pronounce it. What does that word really mean? The word comes from the word Havaya. Havaya means existence. What that means is we believe in existence. Now, that doesn't sound very personal. I'm praying. Interesting, right? Like, um, it's just existence. Anyways, there's these other articles I found. Part of my slow computer. Should I just reload it? Hello? You gonna come in? Okay, there we go. Who is the god of the Kabbalah? God and Kabbalah means the general force of nature, where other than this force, nothing exists. So, in and of itself, we consider God as an abstract concept that cannot discuss something existing outside our perception. He calls, uh, in no way can, no one has ever felt that this state of God, also called the creator, in no way can be perceived by us, and therefore this force, force, so, you know, I mean, it's the New Age, similar to New Age and others. Star Wars even teaches it. it's the Force. This Force is called Ad's Moto, His Essence. Everything that we attain and what is possible for, for us to attain. Let's see if I can shrink it just a little bit more. And Well, I don't want to block. I just hope you can read that. Everything that we attain and what is possible for us to attain are the actions of the upper force in relation to us. The wisdom of Kabbalah deals with revealing these actions in relation to a person. We call this upper force the creator because he created the human being and all our qualities within which we feel our world and can explore the creator through our senses. Um... But anyways, um, and you can read this article if you want. There's a video right here. This will completely change about how you think about God. Then there is uh, this other Kabbalah website. I'm pointing out Kabbalah. I'm relating it to the mystery schools because, you know, Albert Pike and many, many other Masonic secret society authors do admit that all occult science... Mystery schools, you know, not, uh, Gnosticism, alchemy, all of it really does come from the Kabbalah, really is rooted in, in the Kabbalah. God is the endless light and creator is the source of the light which is something well beyond our conscience grasp. Now each of us was created with a soul, 100% full of light, therefore each of us does have a personal relationship with God, the light within us. Consists of unique talents and abilities meant to help us complete our spiritual work. Therefore, while God is not a, a being as we understand being, the light is an intelligent conscience energy force. And that light, which is the source of all lasting fulfillment, shines 24-7. When a person speaks to God in those terms, it is really opening one's consciousness to receive inspiration from the light. So, it's an intelligence it's a conscience energy force.
Oh. I lost my thing there. Oh, well. I'll just exit out of there. Let's get back to here. I'll just let him finish here what he's saying. ...into existence. This, this cares about me. But essentially what Judaism is saying is that why do we assume that existence that we exist within and are a part of is any less intelligent than you and I? How... So, we, you know, let's uh, rewind what he said. The hey, the vav, the hey, me, which we don't pronounce, which someday we will, but right now we don't. What does that word really mean? The word comes from the word havaya. Havaya means existence. What that means is we believe in existence. Now that doesn't sound very personal. I'm praying to existence. Existence cares about me. But essentially what Judaism is saying is that why do we assume that existence that we exist within and are a part of is any less intelligent than you and I? How can you have an unintelligent whole, right, with intelligent parts? So really, uh, when the atheist says he doesn't believe in a God in existence, he's right. Because God isn't in existence, he's, he, is, he is existence, and infinitely more than existence. Okay. So, you know, on Pesach, we say, Baruch HaMakom Baruch Hu, in the Haggadah. We say, blessed is the place, blessed is he. Right? What, what, why is the divine referred to as the place? So our sages teach us because Hashem is the place, the divine is the place where in which we exist. So most people have this image that there's existence. In existence, there's an infinite being called God. Alongside that God is you and me. So he's infinite, we're infinitesimal. He's all-knowing, and we're somewhat stupid, <laughs> or at least not all-knowing. Right. He's all good. Right. We're not all good. And he's almighty, and we're not almighty. Ha having to stand beside a God like that yeah. makes you feel so small and insignificant. But when you understand the idea of Hashem as existence and beyond, then you don't stand next to God in existence. You exist within Hashem. You are an expression and aspect of Hashem. And really what our sages teach us is, Ein od milvado. There's really nothing but Hashem. Right. Wow, that's a big... There's really nothing but existence. <laughs> you know, and even within the Kabbalah and these Kabbalist rabbis, they don't fully tell the truth either. Uh, you know, so they're, uh, you know, he, he's just, maybe you'll find some other videos, but when he says that he doesn't believe in God as God should be understood, a personal being that, we have to that we're accountable to that we have to answer to um of course he uh he equates that with you know he uses the language you know well i don't in regards to believing in a god in the sky you know you know to to you know demonize the idea of a personal god but that doesn't have to mean that no but um so their concept of god is very alien and this kind of reminds me of now, don't get me mixed up here. Um, I did some videos exposing some of the stuff that Bill Cooper was saying and doing on his shows. But that doesn't mean that he didn't speak a lot of truth. And he did. It also doesn't mean that I didn't that, that I don't believe that, you know, they eventually murdered him. I speculate. But I do believe that, you know, he was still somewhat dangerous to, you know, the elites possibly. And they might have possibly really did uh, kill him. Or it just might have been a shootout. Um, I don't... I question a lot with this truth movement. But he, but he did say, he did teach a lot of truth. And the part that I think he got right was that... The teachings of the mystery schools, the Luciferian philosophy, men are gods. What did he say here? 1305, I think I wrote it down. Yeah, there we go. I'm sorry, let me get here. You always know. We 
always know which is the right way and which is the bad way. The bad way sometimes feels better, so we may choose that way and justify it by rationalization in order to make ourselves feel better about the bad that we did. In the mystery schools, they refer to this mystical time of coming out of the age of innocence as the Luciferian philosophy. I've tried to illuminate you with this for years on my radio broadcast. In the Bible, or in the church, they talk about the fall of man. Same thing. There's only one difference between the Luciferian philosophy and the fall of man is that... By the way, I do find it... ...man believe in God, whether or not they believe in a Savior... Did you catch that? I'll get to that the some other time. The Luciferian philosophy do not. Now here's how that works. In the Bible we're told that Eve was tempted by Satan to eat of the fruit of the I just want to skip over to what he says I'm here. I'm not talking right or wrong. I'm not trying to insult anybody in here. I'm just telling you what we're taught so that we all understand what we're talking about because that's most important. If you understand something differently than what I'm trying to impart to you up here, and we don't have the same definition, we're not going to understand each other, are we? The mysteries, on the other hand, look at this in a different light. Here's their story. It's a metaphor. They don't believe that there ever was a God, or that there ever is a God. See, you gotta, this is where I think he got, this is what I think he got right. Because as we examine here in these videos, and from my reading of other mystery school, Kabbalah literature and stuff like that, is, you know, when they use that word God, I think that they are just disguising what they, you know, truly believe regarding their spiritual belief system. They want people to still kind of think the profane who read these texts we listen to them when they use that word God that, you know, they're still referring to something that's personal or something that's mystical, but it's really just a word that what that guy said, it just means existence, the greater existence of this energy force. In magic, they teach that, you know, you can... Uh, through the will of the magician, manipulate this force, and that this force is, has a both masculine and feminine aspect, or a good and an evil aspect of it. You can use it for good, you can use it for evil. But it's an intelligent force, it's not God. But it has the power it can create, and it has intelligence, but that's the furthest that they'll go with it. But that's what, so, when you get down to it, they don't believe in God. And I think he's right there aside from man himself and man has not reached that state yet but can this is what they teach in the lodges that if you perfect yourself as the temple of the god within and become christed you've all heard this in the new age movement you too can become god so anyways just wanted to show that um I've been reading a little bit more. That's why I haven't been making as many videos. And this just, I just wanted to make a video on this. And maybe I want to make a little more where I delve into this. If I find more stuff in their literature. Hang on, I'm going to set this phone down really quick. I'm going to grab something. I had a conversation with, uh, with a, he says he's a member of one of these brotherhoods on the comments section, my videos. One of them is where I, 
I'm reading from one of their books called The Philosophy of Fire, showing how the author took the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 out of context. Anyways, we got into this conversation. He claimed that they didn't teach that, you know, when they get initiated, that they become as God. Uh, or as one of the gods or how, you know, whatever, whatever's, you know. So I quoted him all these quotes from their books. And he said that, you know, you become a son of God, but not the God. And I quoted to him that, you know, he's that, you know, hey, Clymer wrote that you become a Christ, you become a Messiah, you become as the gods knowing good and evil. The promise of the serpent is basically, you know, uh, was, wasn't a lie, wasn't a deceit, but it's the true promise. And so he did say that their order doesn't teach that um, you can become the God. So that's why I really was on a kind of a little bit of a quest to examine this because, yeah, in terms of God as an energy force of existence, yes, that's true. Yeah, they are not that. But since man is the most intelligent of all creation, capable of building the things that we have built over the, you know, since we've gained intelligence anyways. Um, and we were the only ones that basically can build a global empire and can do the things that we do. And, and, and to, to basically in a sense, you know, uh, we in this earth are basically the only gods, according to them. Then ergo, you know, they teach that man is God. Esoterically. You know, when you get past all the esoteric mumbo jumbo, man is God. They even write, now I'm trying to go over their books where they were in other mystery school literature where they talk about, um, where they talk about uh, God not being a personal God. And that's very important to understand. The occult sciences, and then that is rooted in the Kabbalah, doesn't believe in God. So, there you go. It is this hidden science of mastering tapping into whatever whatever branch of the mysteries you get into of this mystical hidden energy force that is intelligent like started the creation of the earth through the big bang i've heard a couple of these guys say that that yeah it's the intelligence is responsible for starting the big bang but as far goes as being a personal being no so I just wanted to do this video and show you, give you some insight for those who don't really understand this, that when you're having these people talking to you about God, you must interpret what they're saying to you and, and, their de well, and what their definition of God is. You must have an understanding of what they mean by God, because it's not God, the same definition that I have of God. It is basically atheism packaged with, you know, you know, like the Star Wars, where, you know, you can tap into this force, use it for good, good or evil. Anyways, wanted to show you that. Take care.